Greetings, flat earthers and globelings. Got a, another video here today. Another experimental video, of course, using experimental lighting. <laughs> Got the high beams of my car on. And let's see what time it is. Can't see it now. That's okay. No. So we got a new brew today. Lager. Brewed in Ireland. So let's see how it goes. It's amazing. Nice and cold. Okay, so uh, what we want to show today, what we want to talk about today is, you know, there's a problem in flat earth. And I'm starting to find out, you know, how it started. And I call these people pond huggers. So the pond hugger basically he's exchanged infinite space for infinite land and uh, trying to get the best lighting here yeah that's basically what they've done they've traded infinite space for infinite land and discovering other beings for you know finding aliens on other planets so that's basically what they're doing and it's a joke you know it really doesn't make any sense and it all you know a lot of it is based on uh, the iron uh, I forgot what it's called now um, the Iron Republic or something like that something from 1902 that was printed by a political guy in this uh, magazine in Florida that, um, you know, prints one of the subjects they cover is fiction. So stories, okay? And this guy's trying to pass this off as true and somehow it proves the flat earth, like something ridiculous like that. Not the flat water or anything like that, but this guy's a story. And I didn't bother to, well, I mean, I haven't finished. I'm going to bother to do it. I've just kind of gotten into it. <clears throat> so they're trying to say that, oh, yeah, this is true. And then they pull up other things like this Buddhist map that surfaced in Hawaii. Well, that's a bunch of BS. It just looks like a photocopy to me. And, you know, Buddhist temples, they're all satanic. So why would I put any credence in that? I wouldn't put any. Okay, and this other political guy, he's with the YMCA, that's Freemason right there. I mean, he was a lawyer, the whole thing. Like, you have to kind of see who this person is who put that story out, the Iron Republic. And then there's another, there's other stories like Polar Man. And so basically what, you know, they think there's more land, there's secret passages, you know. Well, that's all BS. Okay, all of that. BS. Okay, what I'm going to concentrate on is the King James Bible and Genesis, okay? That's provable, testable, and observable. And so, anyways, um, the early explorers as well, like Captain Cook. So that guy's thing in 1902, the Iron Republic, was basically a response to uh, this book that I've re uh, made here in hardcover. I made it for myself. It's called Flat Earth Textbook. That's what it says on the spine. I don't know. Oh, sorry, that's not the spine. <laughs> okay, right there. Okay. And I put this together for myself. And for anyone else who wants to read it, I just liked Winship's book. And so I just thought, you know, I'm going to make a hardcover. I'm going to make it better, a more beautiful book. And so that's what I did. 
each chapter is on a different page. It's awesome. And I added some extra stuff to it as well. But I didn't change anything from the original. So, just want to read you something out of the book here. On chapter on contrasts. And this is by Cook. So, yeah, so that guy's story, The Republic, was a response to this. This was published in 1899. His thing was 1902. So, no, we don't want to get into the facts of Flat Earth. We want to, oh, yeah, everybody will believe the Flat Earth based on my story. Like, literally, that's what he says at the beginning of his story. Um, yeah, all the Zetetic uh, will have to be adopted after they hear this. Like, what a bunch of crap. Okay, what about the flat water and, you know, all the other uh, real things? We got to go by this guy's story? No, he's just making things ridiculous. And then this bird, company guy bird, you know, as if his speech wasn't 100, 1,000% 1, scripted. And people are putting credence in that? You have to be crazy, okay? So anyways, I'm going to read you the passage here. Let's see, uh, okay, it says... I can get okay so on the I can't even see I'm like going blind here on the South Georgian okay on the South Georgias in the same latitude as Yorkshire in the north Cook did not find a shrub big enough to make a toothpick so at the same latitude in the south versus the north, they couldn't even find a little shrub to make a toothpick out of. Okay, <laughs> that's really sad. Okay, um, Captain Cook describes describes it as a savage, as savage and horrible. Savage and horrible. There's like so many icebergs. It's so much colder in the south than the north. I mean. You can't survive down there. There's nothing. You know, the Gleason's map says there's no light beyond the 80th latitude or so. So what are these crazy people? Oh, there's a secret passage and it's heated by, uh, you know, underwater, whatever. Stupid, stupid, stupid. So anyways, the wild rocks raised their lofty summits till they were last lost in the clouds. Probably like low clouds. Um, and the valleys lay covered with everlasting snow. Everlasting snow. There's no seasons down there. Um, the temperature varies only maybe a few degrees throughout the year. Totally different from the north. Like the north you can live way up past the 80th latitude. And they have actual seasons and t tons of life up there okay so valleys lay covered with everlasting snow not a tree was to be to be seen not a shrub even big enough to make a toothpick okay he says it again who could have thought that an island of no greater extent than this, the Isle of Georgia, situated between the latitude of 54 and 55 degrees. So they're at 54 and 55 degrees and it's already so savage, you can't even live there, okay? That's how bad it is. No life, barely, okay? Um, 54 and 5 degrees should in the very height of summer be in a manner wholly covered many fathoms deep with frozen snow. So like forever, it's snow there. Many fathoms deep, just covered in the height of summer, okay? So that tells you what's going on. And you think that you're gonna find a secret passage when these explorers sailed around in the early 1800s and they didn't find any, but it exists because some clown political guy wrote a story that he, you know, there's something. Okay, come on, 
get a brain. Okay, and then bird? You're gonna believe bird? That stupid Buddhist map? Please. Okay. Your mind is being screwed with. Okay. Huh. So the other thing, I don't know if it shows, but let's just talk about it. Okay. So previously, it was summer when the sun was closest to the ball. Okay. And this book was published in 1899. So my challenge to Globers is, when did the switch occur? Okay. When did it all of a sudden now become summer when the sun is furthest from the uh, when the earth is furthest from the sun? Okay. It's stupid. And you can see how it's illuminated. Okay. You couldn't have any seasons. Okay. That's the other thing. There would be no seasons. All right. It'd be the same in the top and the bottom. Okay. Oh, and they say the tilt. It's all bullshit. The other thing they can't ever explain, no matter what, is how we see the sun in the winter, if you're in the northern hemisphere, it's lower down, okay? It sets at a um, later, no, it sets earlier and rises later, okay? And at its height during noon, it's lower than in the summer, where the height is higher, it rises earlier and sets later. They have no way to account for that. None. Not back then when this book was written and not today either. There's absolutely no way to account for that. Okay? That, that lag and the positioning of the sun. But it works perfect on flat earth. Perfect with the circling sun. Because the sun spirals between the two tropics. And in winter, of course, you're going to see it higher and more because it's at the northern tropic okay and then summer it's getting away from you I mean winter it's getting away from you okay and down to the southern tropic it's that simple it works perfect the analemma that's another thing it's a lopsided figure eight of the path of the sun okay so what are these idiots talking about and when you look at this you know and the ball is spinning all your days are going to be 12 hours. <laughs> you know, how are you going to do with anything different? Like, they're crazy. So it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, what I said about the sun is in the chapter on seasons. Okay, flat earth textbook dot blogspot dot com and flat earth classroom dot blogspot dot com is where I talk about the spin and the F over 2 pi. So that's about it. That's all I really wanted to say today. I hope the video looks okay. If not, I'm just going to make it again. That's it. So have a good one.